is a term. It comes from the internet, perhaps just from computer science itself, but more appropriately, but the term is Geigo. You get a smile or two from those who are familiar with it. Essentially, it is an acronym for garbage in, garbage out. That kind of means for computer programmers, if they don't have good programming going in, they can't expect a very good product coming out of it. And brethren, this is actually a pretty good and a pretty accurate description of what? <laughs> Us, our human nature. God says this about mankind, and I'd like to read what he does say from a couple of scriptures in the Old Testament. And I'm certain most of you are more than familiar with the epic scenes in, as they've turned out to be in Genesis as God formed man and woman and all the things that went on then. But let's go forward a little bit in the story. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9. Isaiah 55 and beginning in verse 8, he, God says this, it's a, quite a statement, quite a demarcation, a line of separation. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Let's add a little gasoline to the fire here, <laughs> talking about our way of thinking as human beings. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9, I'll read a statement from that verse. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9, And there are many other places in the Bible that, in the Old Testament, where I'm spending a little bit of introductory time right now, where what God is expressing here is magnified time and time again. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9, the heart, that really has to do emblematically of the, the mind of human beings. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? <laughs> Deceitful above all things. Desperately wicked. Not just making a statement, but putting, as we could almost say, superlatives to make the point, to drive it home. And God says this all about mankind. And I'll go back to the title of my sermonette that as I was introduced, is, the title is Think Like God. How's this going to work out? Jesus taught this about people during his earthly ministry. And we'll go to Mark 7, verses 20 through 23 to see what he actually did say. He was confronted by the Jewish leadership, and they were appalled that his disciples didn't wash their hands in the prescribed fashion, which was all very ceremonial. And you can see something like that as they, the elders or the people stand before the wailing wall and do their bobbing and stuff printed prayers into the, or handwritten prayers into the wall there, very tradition bound in that society. And that's true of the time of Jesus Christ. And he takes exception with this and he teaches. And he said in verse 20 of Mark seven, what comes out of a man, that's what defiles a man. Because the Jews were making a big point about defilement before eating with unwashed hands. For from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, 
adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. All of these evil things come from within and defile a man. I think this goes hand in hand with what I've already read from Isaiah and Jeremiah about how deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, as Jeremiah says about the human heart or the human mind, the human nature that we have. Now going forward a little bit more, this is the message of and for Christianity. I told you what God said in about mankind in the Old Testament, what Jesus taught in the New Testament. Now, in remaining in the New Testament, let's go to Romans 8, verses 6 through 7. This is the message that the ministry of Jesus Christ, those he appointed in the church to bring out to the people of that time and to our time for all time. Romans 8, verse 6 for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity, that is, hatred against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Brethren, if we accept these verses cumulatively, if we believe them, then what are we to do about them? And perhaps what have we done and what should we continue to do? I'd like to go back, go back to some basics here. Oftentimes we have people <clears throat> contact us and they like what they hear. They get all, love the term, Twitter-pated, excited, at least superficially about learning new truth and for some reason they never advance they never do what I'm about to read from Acts 2 verse 38 to really begin the true process of learning to think not like a carnal human being but rather to think like God Acts 2 and verse 38, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for a reason, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Several steps involved here. Repent. Be baptized. Don't put that off if God is calling you because your sins will not be removed until you go through all of these steps and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit then you can replace the proverbial old way of getting air out of a bottle is to put something in to drive the air out so if you want to get air out of a bottle that's empty how do you do that <laughs> pour water in and it'll drive all the air out Pour the Holy Spirit into yourself through doing these things. God will do that. And you can change. The message continued, Acts 3, verse 19. Peter again preaching. He says, repent therefore and be converted. Don't remain as you are or were, that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. This is what we preach. This is the message of Christianity. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 3 through verse 5, bringing this forward, because the ministry kept coming back to this, and here we see Paul's writings. He says in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, you know, in this carnal body, we do not war according to the flesh, and it is a war, the flesh against the spirit. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Not carnal, not fleshly. We have his Holy Spirit to 
fight with, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now notice this powerful statement, this challenge, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Learning to think differently. Is that something we did once upon a time and don't have to work on anymore? <laughs> Hardly. Now, I'm going to read some pickings from several verses quickly here that reinforce what I'm talking about today. Until Christ is formed in you is an instruction given. We are and then going to another verse that I've, or part of a verse that I picked out. We are told to arm yourselves also with the same mind. And it's speaking as the same mind of Jesus Christ. Continuing, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Continuing, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And without Christ in us, there is no hope of glory. And then another, but we have the mind of Christ. Now, if you're taking notes and if you want to, I'm going to do this little mix and match differently. I, I'm just going to give you now the scriptural verses that I quoted from without rereading them. But if you want to go back and review them in depth, that might be your homework from this sermonette. Galatians 4:19, 1 Peter 4, verse 1, Philippians 2, verse 5, Colossians 1, verse 27, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 16. And there are more. I could keep going through the Bible and pick out things that teach this truth that we have to have Christ in us. In fact, I will give you one more verse in a moment, but first Galatians 5, without turning there, I'm just going to make this statement about Galatians 5. It draws a contrast between the works of the flesh, the carnal mind, and the fruit, the product of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit of God between being carnally minded like Adam and Eve were and like all of humanity is and being spiritually minded like Jesus Christ was, is and is teaching us to be now a final scripture 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5 here's the challenge this isn't just a call an altar call to get baptized far from that it's a reminder for the season we're about to enter into in Passover, but it's not just then that we do these things. This is day in and day out. 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? unless indeed you are disqualified is the little kicker final statement there. We're supposed to be able to know that, to prove it. We can know that Jesus Christ is in us if we think as he does, as he thinks. And if we do, brethren, then we are thinking like God. <laughs>